We're live on PM Express tonight. Tonight, a conversation with the engineer and former general secretary of the NPP, uh, Mr. Kwabuna e. Japan. And those of you who don't know, uh, we know that uh, he is currently the executive director of the Ghana Institution of Engineering and former general secretary of the NPP. You probably know him more as the former general secretary but yes he's also the current boss of the ghana institution of engineering and we'll be talking a lot about about him as an engineer um and getting to know him that side of him that you haven't heard before today on the show now tomorrow is a big day for his profession and we're going to be talking a lot about the um, Ghana celebrating the World Engineering Day for Sustainable Development. The thing though is, engineering is such a big thing, right? But I am this, I'm learning that apparently this is the first time this global celebration is going to happen about sustainable development. My curiosity though, at the time when the floods are approaching, the mess department has warned us that again, if we don't do the right things, we're going to have floods. I'm wondering what solutions do engineers have for the many problems that bedevil us as a country? Flooding, galamse, roads. We've been talking about arrival life, for example. A lot of the roads are terrible engineering marvels in Ghana. We're talking about that. Um, and, and a lot more sanitation, for example. Um, we have many engineers, but we have many problems also. We're trying to explore what solutions, what engineering solutions he and his colleagues have on offer. Now, the, 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 the thing about the day is dedicated to ensuring a diverse and well-educated uh, future engineering workforce by increasing understanding and interest uh, in engineering and technology careers. They are partnering with UNESCO uh, to make this happen. Um, but we'll also spend time to talk about Kwabna Japan, the politician. Um, I'm pretty sure you've missed him in that arena. This is an election year. Is he still a politician? Has he retired? Has he embraced engineering fully and completely giving up on politics? We'll try and find out that. A man who made news in the lead up to the 2016 elections. Um, if you were born last three years, you wouldn't know about this. But if you were born before that, you would definitely know about um, what happened in the lead up to that. He had, um, he was very close to the president, the current president. He was one time a key person in the president's campaign, but then there was a falling out, which eventually led to a lot happening with him eventually being suspended. The question many ask is whether or not he's still with the NPP, so with politics. Does he miss the game of politics? We'll, we'll try and find out from him um, when, when he joins us on the show. We'll get up to, as we get up to the 2020 elections though, um, very views on, on the topical issues. We'll try and pick his thoughts on that as well, what will be his own contribution uh, to it. Uh, we'll, try and, we'll try and prove that uh, also today. Uh, you want to join us for that conversation here on PM Express. He is in the house. When we return from this particular uh, break, we will get into all matters engineering, how he got into engineering, how he made the transition from engineering to politics and tomorrow's celebration what is it all about what is in it for ghana with all the numerous problems that people say engineering can fix for us very exciting conversation i'm looking forward to don't go anywhere stay with us we'll be right back And you are live on PM Express tonight. Uh, my guest is, as I've told you already, um, you don't need an introduction, by the way. He is Mr. Kwabana J. Japan. He is engineer. He is the executive uh, director, or secretary? Yeah. director of the Ghana Institution of Engineering. And he joins me in the studio. Thank you for agreeing to do this. So there's a big day tomorrow. Um, and this is for engineers. But what surprised me is, and, and clarify this, it's the first time you're celebrating this across the world? That's right. I mean, uh, it happened in Paris two years ago uh, when the World Federation of Engineering Organizations uh, met with UNESCO. 
Um, that was the 50th anniversary of the creation of the World Federation of Engineering Organizations, mm -hmm. which is a roof body representing over 30 million engineers around the world, made up of all the continental organizations like Federation of African Engineering Organizations, which Ghana is a very active member of. And uh, there was this Paris Declaration with UNESCO, um, because we engineers said, look, we want to advance the achievement of the SDGs. The world has seen a lot since 1992. I'm sure you may have been a bit too young around that time. Yeah. Uh, the, the famous Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, mm. from which time global development agenda um, recognized what we call environmental sustainability, which essentially means that those of us today should take care of ourselves without compromising the ability of future generations to also take care of their needs, mm. which means we can't destroy the environment just because we want to mine and have money and do what things we have to do. We have to think for future generations. So the world sustainability become, became uh, a buzzword since 1992. And following that, the Millennium Development Goal, mm. the MDGs. And that is when we're heading towards the year 2000. Those were eight goals set up by the UN to try and reduce poverty, access to water, sanitation, the things that you've said. And uh, quite recently, um, in 2015, the world gathered again at the United Nations, having recognized fully that we were not able to achieve really all the targets. In mm. fact, Africa really was way behind a lot of the targets of the MDGs. And so we now went ahead to set up 17 goals. Some of us were not too happy because the fact that you couldn't attain eight and you move on to 17 mm. and give yourself up to 2030, the, the famous Agenda 2030, mm of the UN SDGs. And we think, um, as an institution in Ghana and uh, through the World Federation of Engineering Organizations, that these are engineer there are engineering interventions that are to be used as an influence to influence the path towards achieving these SDGs. And so um, this day, which is March 4th, which is the best day of the World Federation of Engineering Organizations, um, was proposed to the UNESCO General Assembly and last year in November, um, when we were attending the World Engineering Convention in Melbourne, Australia, that was the same time the UNESCO General Assembly passed mm -hmm. and proclaimed the day um, that from 2024, March 2020, which is tomorrow, mm -hmm. will be the World Engineering Day for Sustainable Development. So and it will be celebrated every year after, after in that. all the member nations. So all the member nations are doing so. Around, around the world. It, I've always been a skeptic when it comes to the UN Day. So there's another day that they've been thrown in there. In real, practical, tangible terms, what does it mean? Well, it means that it, it creates a platform or a springboard for us to discuss issues that worry you. Okay. First and foremost, a lot of people don't understand what engineers do. So we have to advocate and let the world know the role that engineers what play. What do you do? Uh, in fact, as part of the questions I asked them, I think, what do you do? You see, you're, you're sitting here. People are watching you. Yeah. How are they watching you? Through television. Through, through television. Some and television. supernatural power. No, no. <laughs> Get to and the you beams in your home. Transmission and, yeah. and energy and power and transmission lines. These are all engineering uh, areas, that sectors that uh, affect us. In fact, engineering is the backbone of any economy. In fact, since the first industrial revolution, now we are in industry 4.0. Engineering has continuously been the very basis for transformation, for world transformation. Mm. So it, it's very key. I mean, in, in, a, in a country like Ghana, of course, or the third world, I mean, I saw you showing something about sanitation, water and sanitation, which is the goal six of the SDGs. It's, it's critical. How far have we gone? Where are we? We are only 10 years away from 2030. So can we reach the targets in 2030? So these are the discussions that we have to put to policy makers and those ministries, agencies that are responsible for these sectors. Um, goal seven, do we have clean energy, clean and affordable energy? How much of our energy mix is renewable? How much of the sun are we using? Right now, we're using less than 1%. As part of our energy mix, we are resorting to renewable energy. And I know Bui, da, Bui Power is doing, having a new program to increase the amount of energy that they can produce using solar farms. 
which is good because we are trying to strive for renewable energy. When you talk about floods, mm -hmm. it's all about drainage, stormwater engineering. So it's all down to engineering. And on top of it all is the built environment, whether you call it land use planning or town planning, what we mm -hmm. are used to, what is in the name. The important thing is how are we managing a human settlement? That is the key thing. And for us, engineers, architects, surveyors, and planners, we we'll work together in a built environment forum to make our voices heard in the right place. And then we are quite dissatisfied with the lack of enforcement of our policies on land use, on land schemes. And, and if you go to East Legon, for instance, we used to be or supposed to be a residential enclave. It's now virtually mixed use or to a large extent commercial use. And, and in many places in Accra, you don't have green areas. You don't have recreational areas. And it's part of life. You can't have a good life without having a place to relax and jog and do other things. It's all part of city planning. So when we talk about sustainable cities, which is goal 11, having sustainable cities, it encompasses all that. And so the role of engineers is very key. Most people don't recognize everything you do is the transportation engineers have to design, and today our cry is in a gridlock. We need to sit down, have a look at the urban space, and design new modes of transportation to be able to take people from their way, workplace back home and to and fro and goods and services. So everything you touch has to do with engineering. Even more, as we head into Industry 4.0, I mean, there have been new areas of engineering, like biomedical engineering. And now, a lot of medical surgeries are not done the old way, you know. And all these equipment that you use, the MRIs that you use, and the imaging uh, uh, products that you have to use, are all designed and maintained by biomedical engineers. Fascinating. So, if all what you've said is engineering, yeah. then engineering is our problem, then. Because, because everything you've mentioned, from transportation, the, the, to housing, to, uh, to we, we energy are, transmission. We are in such a mess in all these areas in Ghana. I mean, floods, if the floods of the race are coming. I mean, yeah. Why hasn't engineering solved this problem for us? Well, as I said, engineering has to feed into policy framework. Mm. And engineering has to play, we have to accept a lot of the responsibility and the blame for some of these things. So we, have, we are honest about that at the Ghana Institution of Engineering. And I think sometimes we, the technocrats, hide behind politicians mm. and say, oh, the decision was taken by a politician, so um, orders from above. But as technical people, we have to stand the ground and do what is right, what mm. is our principle, and what we are, the ethics of the profession. So there's a disconnect? There is a disconnect, and we're trying to work hard to correct that. And it's very important that we use this day as a springboard mm. to bring this out, have a discussion with civil society, with the public, with government, with academia, with other institutions. And then the new engineering outlook now, we're calling it development engineering. I just attended the, a conference in Ghana, the academic city, this week. Talking Which about, is what exactly? Well, th there's a new thinking. Because sometimes we are in the straight jacket. Engineers are thought to be very stiff. And uh, they can't collaborate with other 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 professionals, mm -hmm. but right now we have to realize that we can't on our own solve the problem. We need a so social scientist to rearrange the behavior of the people, behavioral scientists and other things. Other sectors of society have to come into play in an interdisciplinary attempt to be able to solve these problems. And we need that as, as, as a society. And we the engineers recognize that and we want to work towards that. Even the training of our engineers. Mm -hmm. I'm, quite, I'm old school, a bit of old school. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, it was very stiff. You go through engineering school four years, it's very tough, very rigid, and most engineers are not very flexible. But we, we, we have to understand that most of our work is related to serving communities. So communication is very important. Knowing what the community needs. You know, the, the recent hurrah yeah. about the, uh, I think, the over overhead walkways at yeah. Medina and yeah. all that. Yeah. They ha they sh you see, you, there's something we call public inquiry. Mm. When there are major projects, it's part of our training. There should be public inquiry. Let the public have a say. Let's listen to them. It will impact on the designs we bring up so that we don't bring up is it's designs that are... the way you... And I, I like this because you're using practical examples yeah. that everybody is known and has, is familiar with. That's right. And you're linking it to engineering. This case you mentioned with the foot bridges is an apt one. Yeah. Foot bridges were, were clamored for it. People protested for it. Food bridges are built. Nobody's using it. Using it because people say it's just not friendly. 
Where were the engineers? Well, I mean, the engineers were there, but I mean, they, they clearly something did not work. Yeah, something did not work. What is it? Because the, the, the fact of the it's matter, just one example of everything else that is it, wrong with no, our infrastructure it, it system. Is, it is important that we assemble the best brains, have a discussion. As I said, we have to stop our silo mentality. You can't sit in your own room as one person and design and be able to capture everything that the society needs. And that is why there's a need to interface with other segments of society and, and so that you have advocacy, you have stakeholder discussions, and you input that into the concept that you are trying to develop. And sometimes, once the people know what concept you are trying to develop, they will understand it. For instance, you talk about waste management. And I think the major problem that we face in this country is how we deal with waste at source, at the household level. And we haven't done anything at all about it. Unfortunately, now we have thousands of radio stations, maybe hundreds. Mm -hmm. You know, there are media outlets, there's social media. I think the Ministry of uh, Sanitation has to knuckle down, have a strategy, to, and then policy to back it, that we have to solve segregate. We have to solve segregate all over the world. Not long ago in the 80s in England, they were not so segregating. So just to break that down, so mm -hmm. segregate means, means put, well, put uh, the recyclable ones separate, yeah, even uh, in, liquid waste separate. In not, you see, you don't have to be too complex in a okay, society for like Ghana. Well, for a country like that, I have always uh, recommended just two streams, mm -hmm. what I call the, the, the green the green and the orange stream. You mm -hmm. know, the, the recyclables, the green? the green is mostly the organic, the mm -hmm. ones that are putrescible, that can mm -hmm. go very uh, bad in a couple of days. You know, so once we cultivate that habit from the ch children at kindergarten, through the schools, through the curriculum, and so that at home, you yourself, you source segregate. So that paper, plastics, bottles, textiles, those that don't decompose easily. But that will require a whole yeah. cycle of other, I guess, complementary elements of course, to, to work. So of you, course, need, of course. you need homes to have at least two. Yeah. Um, disposable uh, bins, you need yeah. a, a shadow not, not, collection. Not necessarily bins. Even in, in Europe or in, mm. in, in UK, which I visit very often, they just have plastics. Now they have even decomposable okay. plastics. Plastics, okay. So I mean, when I was you in the UK, they have the bins. Yes. That, but, yeah, you, but have, you have the, the so orange get a, get plastic. Get a black plastic or orange, or a, a whatever green, it is. Or green plastic. You put it just in front of your house. That's right. But then in the second, the third level is then you have to have a system that collects these. That's right. In a timely manner. And it makes it and more And takes them to a proper place for that disposal. Is, that is correct. It makes it more efficient because, one, with the recyclables, you don't need that frequent collection. It can be done once in two weeks or mm -hmm. once in a week. Of course, the organic ones, three, four days, it gets a bit messy. Mm. But then, it means that the, the waste that is being collected, mm. uh, is being collected, can be easily sorted at what mm. we call the MRF, the Material Re Re Resource Recovery Facility. You know, it can be handled, built, and recycled, and used. And if you look at a country like Ghana, where 60% of our waste, if you look at the composition of our waste, is predominantly uh, organic. Mm. And all the studies that I've seen uh, over the last 10 years, I'll give you between 55 60 percent. And for instance, if you go to Agbogloshi, the waste there, mm. you, should, you have to go and educate the women not to sweep it with their grit and their debt. Mm. Because the tomatoes and the yams and the, the, the plantain uh, waste can be used. Yeah. It's organic waste. It can be used for anaerobic digestion. You understand? It's so, not simple enough. But why have we so often failed to deal with this basic challenge we have? It, it, well, it's not exactly basic. It's, it's a tough yeah, challenge. Yeah, it's, it's, no, no. It's the way you describe it, it's just have to. It, it, two it can be done. It's, collect it, it as regular, dispose it, it properly. It's, it's absolutely vital that policymakers understand these things. And that is why. They don't understand it? Well, we engineers are a bit worried, especially when we look at the balkanization of our assemblies. I'm mm -hmm. worried that. Uh, we are having too many small assemblies. Maybe we have to insulate political administration from engineering management. Mm. Because when, for instance, if you are doing um, basin management, the outdoor basin management, there are about 18 um, districts mm. in there. And people, you know, in Ghana, people love, they love protecting their turf. Yeah. But if you are an engineering management manager and you are doing drainage um, design, you need a holistic approach. You know, you have to go across boundaries. And so it is important that the management of the engineering functions mm -hmm. should be a bit removed from political administration mm. so that you can look at the drainage of Accra as a basin-wide approach. 
For instance, we've never in our lives had motorway flooding. Last year there was. It flooded. What, what do you think was the problem? What, what, because what, if you look at the developments that are going on near Tema, where we used to have uh, uh, a retention area, mm. okay? In fact, it was a bed's enclave, mm. you know? And so in times of extra rainfall events, there's a place for us to divert water. And, you know, now it's all been taken up by estate developers. Mm. Once you do so, it means that your discharge capacity is reduced significantly. And there's going to be backflow. Once there's backflow, you have what happened at, uh, on the motor. Give me your best projection as an engineer. Once the, that place flooded, mm -hmm. what does it tell you about what might happen um, down the line if that problem hasn't been fixed already and left to fester? What, what, what well, are you projecting you, will happen if further? You, first and foremost, you, you have to really model the situation as mm. it is, is, is. Unfortunately, we, in today's world, you have software ca that can model and let you know if you have an extreme uh, one in 50 year rainfall event, you can model and be able to tell that this building here, the water will rise to this level. Over so time? Over, no, at, when you have an extreme okay. event, say one in 100 or one in 25, you can model it and be able to warn people, have early warning signals. Floods happen. I mean, sometimes when people complain about floods, I laugh a bit. We, the engineers, laugh a bit because it happens all over the world. I mean, New Orleans. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. It, it doesn't mean that we can't plan. You can have early warning systems and uh, insurance. Mm. So certain areas have to have insurance because once in maybe 25 years, there are things will be swept away and the insurance companies will have to come in. So all these things have to be planned. And the only way that can be done is that our regulations on planning permission, on planning schemes, have to be properly enforced. Right now, there's a complete breakdown in enforcement because there's a chaotic assemblage of uh, ministries and agencies that are trying to deal with the problem. It's difficult to tell. I mean, when I was a kid, there was town and country planning. It used to be under works and housing. Then it went to Ministry of Environment mm. and then local government. Right now, I don't know where it is. Um, the name has been changed. It's land use whatever but no. what is in the name the fact of the matter is they are the ones that the law mandates to plan the environment and once they plan an area should be declared a planned area mm. before development is allowed a quick one uh, one of the things that currently is bad devil in the country is galam say right i mean talks about sustainable environment etc what 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 solutions are you are you proposing well what? clearly it so has to it has to do with laws and practices and mining practices mm. and and they are protocols that you have to follow of course, I mean, if you're going to mine and do alluvial mining and disturb water, water courses that you use as your main source of water treatment, one downstream is going to have a problem with the Ghana Water Company. Mm. Which is already happening. Well, I because mean, they are training. Western I mean, region they, is they, 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 Russian. Yeah, and, and so th those are issues we have to look at. So there are areas that should be off limits. I mean, I drive along the Kasua Road. Well, we have off limits in name, but. It People should be. go there. It should be because as, as a kid, into as a kid coming from school in fancy film school, and you used to look at the greenery of the hills when you are getting to wager, I am totally traumatized. Now, how is it that we have allowed people to go and mine into those very, you see those rocks there, and it's so stratified and weak. Mm. You know, if anybody Disaster who waiting to happen? anybody who knows anything about your technical engineering and rock mechanics who know that when it is stratified, there are layers of weaknesses. And after there's ingress of water, after heavy rains, those fault lines can slip. And so, therefore, there can be situations where you can have landslides. And people have built right on top of, of these. Uh, because very they were allowed to do so. They were allowed to do Let, so. Let's people have to be stopped from doing that. And there are other places that you can build. Why should you go and into, I mean, you go around the Cape Coast Road. And all you see are excavators have been used to disturb the environment. Mm. Who has allowed that? Yeah. Who is responsible for that? Who are the engineers responsible for that area? You know, people have to be held accountable. There's something called community mining that the government has introduced. It's a replacement given alternatives to other people. Is that a good thing? I haven't taken a critical look, and I don't like to comment on things that we haven't really taken Let a me ask you about tomorrow. I mean, now that we've, we've sort of laid the groundwork for yeah. why this is even important. Yeah. What, what's happening tomorrow? What, tomorrow, what? tomorrow we are collaborating with UNESCO and Accra Technical University to bring a lot of young kids mm. uh, between the ages of 8 and 15 um, to the ATU um, to just introduce them to engineering, to encourage them to have engineering careers. 
We are replicating the same with our branches in Volta. That is in Ho also. They are treating 500 kids. Uh, in Tamale, they are doing the same at the Nat Hall, the branch in Tamale. And in Kumasi as well, at the Bill um, BRI at the KNUST. And so the, the, the whole thing is to let engineering be attractive to the youth. And we think it is important that especially the girl child they should get involved in our time in, in my time in school there was no girl in my class mm -hmm. but right now since uh, the last 15 years in fact we celebrated 20 years of women in engineering last year mm -hmm. we have moved from two percent to nine we mm -hmm. still think we can hit 20 in in 10 years and mm -hmm. get you know a lot of young women. you have a daughter yes i have is she, is she an engineer? No, she's interested in, she's doing public health in university. Okay. <laughs> My son, rather, is an engineer. Okay, good. And so, uh, he's, you know, so tomorrow, basically, we, 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 we want to let the young people know that there's job opportunity in engineering. There are new areas of engineering. We want to introduce them to that. And we want people to know the impact mm. of engineering on their societies. Right now, we are looking at smart societies. We, we, people are talking about artificial in intelligence. They're talking about robotics. There are certain waste treatment facilities in Germany that robots are doing all the sorting. Mm. Out, you know, so things are changing in our lives. And today, what your phone can do, yep. I mean, 20 years ago, mm. it, it couldn't do. And so the, the issue about how is new tech and innovation reshaping engineering for a greener environment. Okay. I mean, today, we, uh, I had a meeting with GIZ, which is a German development agency, about retrofitting buildings, large buildings in our country to improve energy efficiency. You know, so th th those are serious matters. Are our buildings uh, sustainable? Are they environmentally friendly? It means that we have to engage the architects that design them so that they can reorient their thinking to the new world. Mm. You want to see buildings that can lift you. Everybody talks about the ECOWAS. Uh, the echo bank building yep. you know you know when you see a building sometimes it can give you a lease of life mm -hmm. and it, it it allows you to have a, a proper living environment and all mm -hmm. this happens when you have engineers on the ball who are working to the new technologies who are looking at the best practice around the world and that's what we want to do mm -hmm. and tomorrow is a day all of us are celebrating it uh, we are humble enough to work with our artisans, to work with, and also to let the world know that it's not, not the engineers who are most important. In fact, you have your technicians and your craftsmen, mm. because in, in, on a building side, they are the ones who tie the iron rods, and they have to do it all. The technicians who lay the tiles, it's all part of engineering, and we want everybody to be on board to see how we can support um, the engineering sector, the whole industry, and also to have livable cities. And mm. uh, again, if you look at Go 13, everybody's talking about climate action. How does it affect no. us? And how far forward have we gone I'm so far? climate skeptics uh, in right. the system. And I must say, sometimes I'm even a climate skeptic, but uh, climate change skeptic, I mean. But great, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about, we've talked about Kamenei Japan, the engineer. We'll have to talk about Kamenei Japan, the football lover and talk about him, the politician. Stay with us. The kids are bored. Science kits are supplied, now they are excited and they progress to higher levels. The Ghana Institution of Engineering is the link between academia and industry. Engineering has evolved over the years. Today we have as many as 60 disciplines of engineering, including the likes of biomedical engineering, aeronautical engineering, um, aerospace engineering far away from the earlier modes of civil, mechanical, electrical and chemical engineering. In developing countries such as Ghana, most of the challenges we face are engineering related. Talk about housing, talk about roads, talk about energy, talk about sanitation, and it's down to providing solid engineering solutions. Engineering activities occur in a wide array of places. 
The current expansion of the Tema Harbour, for example, requires engineering from all disciplines. So that's a sense of the, the work that uh, engineers are doing uh, in Ghana. And, and so it beats me. I'm curious. This is a curious question. How did you then make the transition from an engineer to a politician? <laughs> because um, what we well, just watched well, there just okay. illustrates the importance of this. Of course. I mean, um, as I And said, I thought you love it forever. Like, you stay I, in that I love it. And I you love just it. do that. But but also you made that transition. I love my country. I love my people. I'm someone who's passionate about Ghana, passionate about what is good, um, knowing my own personal circumstances and what I've been through in life. <coughs> I have empathy. And um, and if you drive around and you see kids at the traffic lights uh, struggling for a living, um, and if it doesn't impact on you, then you have no business being a Ghanaian. No? So I think it's important I, that we have to love one another. We have to love our country and do th and be principled and and, and and serve our country. I've always believed in the three S's when I talk about sacrifice, selflessness, and service. Mm. I think we need a large dose of that in whatever we do, whether we find ourselves as politicians, technocrats, business people. This rush for material gain doesn't help anyone. Mm -hmm. And at, at the end of the day, we have to be sometimes spiritual about it. What, what do we need all that for? You know, I think you are, I feel happy when I put a smile on the face of someone. So you came into politics because of that? A lot of it. To make a difference. Yes, a lot of it. But uh, as I said, I mean, tomorrow is World Engineering Day. I, yeah. don't, I don't want to discuss too much. Well, I mean, I mean there's, there's, there's no way you can, you can come on the show and not talk <laughs> about politics. So, so let, let's, let's think so about I, 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 I So I'm serving my country in my professional institution, which I think yeah. is a good thing. Um, that's how I want to see it. Yeah, but, but, but did you ever do exclusive engineering? Yes. I mean, well, because, because when we were in school, that was when we were under military dictatorship. I mean, when you graduated. And when we were in school, we were under military dictatorship, yeah. and there was a lot of things happened. And our students, uh, we played a role in the, the political activism mm. and all that. And then just after I graduated in 1986, that's when the pressure was being brought to bear on the military dictatorship to loosen up and allow mm. the return to democratic rule. So we had a young group of... Uh, warriors we used to call ourselves the young executive forum a lot yeah. of young business people young educated uh, guys who put ourselves together who had liberal ideas who felt that we could not be shackled by a military dictatorship and ghana um, deserved to go back to democracy and uh, we worked with the dankwabuzia memorial club and that was the precursor to the new patriotic party and mm -hmm. then when that the party was formed we, we played a major role. Your family member then, did you? Yes, we, we played a major role. Uh, we were right there, those, those who will remember. I was the face of the MPP in 1992 during the campaign um, for Professor Edu Boy. And uh, so... When the, you say face, you were there? I was the one doing the uh, television adverts. At that time, it was tough. We were talking about a military dictator who was uh, tough. You know? I not many people, teams then, but I have a not, fair idea not, what Not many about. people would even volunteer to come and do that. So it was tough. Mm. You needed to be able to sacrifice, especially when I was a, a very young civil engineer working at the Ghana Highway Authority yeah. as a materials engineer. And sometimes you, go, you do your campaign adverts, the next day you have to go back to work at the Hall of Technology, and then your bosses are running away from you. Everybody was scared you know, to touch you with a long barge pole. I mean, th things have changed. Life has changed now. We've had uh, several years of democratic rule, so mm -hmm. things are better. And uh, I think that as a country, we have to get back to our values. The values of what values? Yeah, values not of some of and accountability. Not just words. I don't believe in just verbiage and throwing banding about. You words. think they are just words? It's in uh, the constitution. Yes, yes. It, it, yeah, it may be, but I think the right things have to be done. And I think God gives everyone a conscience. Right. And I do not believe that anything that you do, your conscience does not pick you tell you whether mm. it is good or bad. And it's, it's quite clear. And I do think as Ghanaians, we should love our country first, whether we are civil servants, we are politicians. I think right now, we tend to put all the blame on the politicians. But nobody was born a politician. Don't they deserve it? Nobody was born a politician. Politicians only come about because they've been given political appointments. All of us are Ghanaians. And all of us 
have to be interested in how the country is run. And I think it's very important, wherever we find ourselves, a lot of these issues that we've seen in this country is because the civil service itself hasn't stood up tall and done what the it's supposed to The politicians haven't allowed them to. Why? Or who says it? I don't You've think been so. in I, I've been in government before. Yeah. I've been in government, served as the press secretary. The politicians don't it is allow not, them It is to not work. exactly true. It is not oh, exactly, so there's some truth in it's, that. It's not exactly true. I mean, there are some politicians who are very intrusive. Oh, of course, these things can happen. But I remember working as a civil engineer, supervising um, the um, asphalt repair works at Kutuka International Airport in 1991. CP then, very powerful contractor, those uh, Karl Pleutner and all that. And to close the international airport for three, four days is, is, is disastrous. Economically, logistically, flights mm. are being uh, uh, diverted to Lomi and all that. Mm. And contractors who come in thinking that they have political connections and they want to bulldoze and do things without following the lay down protocols about testing and making sure there's quality control. And I insisted that. 24 hours 7, you know, and then you, you, you sometimes have to be very tough. You know, even sometimes your bosses may be scared, but you as a young engineer, you have to insist on the right things. If the material is not good, it's got to be removed. So is it, just to clear, the civil, the civil servants' fault that they are not this assertive, or the politicians' fault who doesn't allow I, them to be this or possibly I, victimizes them when they do? I think the media tries to to pigeonhole civil servants or politicians, I think it's important that we become Ghanaians. It doesn't matter what role we play. And we should have pride in our nation mm. and love for our nation. Mm. And I think it's something that is missing. There's something you've said that, that I guess missing. tells me about your sort of character. You just mentioned about you stood your ground as a civil servant, etc. Um, I'll come back to that. But do you miss politics? Um, I miss serving my party. I miss serving my country. I mean, that, that's for a fact. And I, because I think I can, I can make a contribution. I see a lot of things happen that I think can be improved and should be improved. Um, this country is a lovely country. I've traveled far and wide. Uh, my, the work I do and the things that has taken me around the world. And Ghana is one of the most livable places you can ever be. And so when I see the degeneration of politics, what I worry now, and I said it when I was general secretary. If you remember the statement I read when the NDC were having their um, Congress, Congress in Kumasi. Uh, and I said it. That must have been 2015? 2014. 14. And I said, to, look, these are the two major parties in the country. And for the next few years, maybe, it's likely we may be changing places. The way we treat ourselves, the way we respect ourselves is very important. I'm traumatized as how we have allowed political discourse to degenerate. We think that when you sit on television and radio and insult and be very venomous and disrespectful, that makes you a politician. That reminds me. I've, I've had a lot of dealings with you. One of the things I remember about you when during the election petition, one judge took on politicians, and you were actually upset that the, the way he ran down yeah, your profession. Right. I remember you calling me to complain That's right. that... You, you, you felt a bit hurt yeah. that that was happening. Yes. I, I remember telling the Sidu in Ketia this some time ago yeah. when he called, when we were 17 of us contesting yeah. uh, for the flag bearer ship in 2007. And he said, 17 thieves. I said, Sidu, you know what you're doing? You run down politics in the eyes of the Ghanaian people and they lose respect for all of us and we all go down together. People have to have faith in politics, in their political leaders. Yeah. We don't have to continuously do things that destroy the confidence that people should have in politics. Has that confidence been destroyed now? A lot of things are happening that could be changed. Such I mean, as? you've seen what is happening with these so-called scholarships and all that. The Get Fund Scholarship? That's right. And I think some, when something is wrong, it's wrong. And it's... it's it, it can't still a lot of my friends. friends are, names have been come up. Are, it, come it, up it doesn't make it right. It does not make it right. You know, so I, I think that as a people, we... We, we have to, so sometimes you have to die for your principle and suffer for it. You, you understand. And I think as politicians, as Ghanaians, there should be respect, there should be decorum and civility. I, I, so these days, you watch some of the morning shows, I, I'm, I'm shocked. The, the language that is coming. Mm -hmm. And so people have to come out and be tough. You can have a good discourse and disagree and be principled and get your message across without being... 
violently mm. disrespectful. You know, I, I, came, I talked about the character. I want to come back because you touched on it again twice here. You said, die for what you believe in. You say, I mentioned to you that some of your friends are involved in the Get Fund. You said, well, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Mm. Um, stuff like that can get you into trouble in politics in Ghana. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. And I think we need to create a, I mean, and, and a, I a, critical, a critical mass of people who love this country. Yeah. And the good people should rise up. And we should have a critical mass. Mm. You see, we are beginning to think that, oh, politics is about politics. Mm. Oh, oh, we, oh, I did this because it's politics. Oh, we just dirtied you, we insulted you, accepted because it's part of politics. I mm. do not accept that. Politics has to be decent. Isn't oh, yeah. it? It, it isn't. isn't it a lot of it that goes on is indecent. People say things that are untrue, they lie about people, and they say all sorts of things. And it's not right. I think politics has to be decent. We, it's a contest of ideas. And first and foremost, people should understand that you go into politics to serve. I served President Kufu in the country for six years. You served I Nanando don't think. as well, actually. You were, was campaigned. Uh, yes, yes, director in 1998. Yeah. People forget, actually. People shouldn't. It's part of the political history. I'll write a book later, and all the details will come through. But I think it's important. When I see the battle to get into government, we send a bad signal. Mm. The bad signal is as if we go into government to fatten our soul. Doesn't yeah. that what happened? No, I didn't. I didn't. I was there for six years. Nobody could point a finger to me. But I know that's probably you know? an exception to the rule. But it should, it, that should not be the case. That should not be the case. Governance is serious business. The welfare, the collective welfare of 30 million Ghanaians mm. is serious business. We, when we sit on radio stations, and some of you, the media people as well, mm. the questions they ask, is all like a concert party. They're joking with serious matters, people's lives. And we have to come across as serious-minded people. Is, is, isn't this government making a difference in these matters that you just talk, talk, on, talk about? I don't, I've told you that. I know you won't lose the chance to drag me into... No, it's passing, a simple question. Passing haven't you seen... It's not, it's not, a, it's seen, not a simple question. Haven't you seen... I have, I've, I've told you... Improvement I've, I've, in I've, the last three I've years. I've told you, Evans, that... You know what? When I want to get back into the fray, you'll be the first to... Let me ask you this. <laughs> you are you, still, are you still a card-bearing member of the MPP? Of course. I've, I've never been removed as a member. People tend to get confused. I mean, I was suspended as general secretary of the party. That tenure is over. So the mandate is gone. But you use, a word, use an important point, suspended. Yes. yes. Are you still in suspension? When your tenure is over, suspension from what? I, I get the point. I mean, but you know what so, I mean. I mean, so, the word you use was suspension. No, so I think it's quite clear. My letter is clear, is there, is public uh, document. When you are suspended from a position, <coughs> footballers tend to get, what, five games, six games, you know. And so once the mandate expired on April 14th, 20. You remember? Of course I do. Why? Why, Why do you remember? Of course it's important. I Why? Mean, it's an important part of my life and I love my party and it's, it's part of my public record. And uh, I worked hard to become general secretary and I still stand by what I mm. did and work hard for the party and I love the party and I still contributed. You still love even, the party? Of course. I, I played, uh, I contributed a lot to the 2016 elections. People, a lot of e people Even in know. all the challenges you can ask through. the many constituencies that I helped that I mobilized resources and supported it's documented so you haven't you and I didn't hide it I, I didn't hide it you should I mean, pay your, your dues to the party of course I paid for every four years so I paid up to the next four years at last year at, at, uh, at my hometown would you contribute this year I'm, well, I don't mean pay your dues I mean this is an election your party needs you I think I think definitely um, of course, right now, I'm the executive director of uh, a non-governmental organization. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't want you to draw me into yeah. this. But of course, I think there's a higher calling of serving our country. And, yeah. I, and I, I do believe sooner rather than later, um, I'll be back in there. That is important. This is sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, you know, they say you, the leopard doesn't lose those it's spots. Uh, the yeah. spots. Um, so you were hoping to come back into full-time politics? Of course. I'm too young to leave it. Interesting. In what? In, and, in and I think I should always serve my country. In what capacity? I should, uh, are you uh, well, that is that is not to be determined. Partisan now. politics, <laughs> of course. Or government service, whatever. 
you have to serve your country. It's absolutely vital. Because I was going to ask you, I think you asked my question, you're not retired then? No. Like, you're not a retired politician, you no. haven't retired from no. politics? No, I haven't said so. Sometimes you can take a sabbatical. So this is sabbatical? <laughs> you can take a sabbatical. But sooner than later, um, this year? This year? In the time frame on it? Let's leave it that way, sooner rather than later. Okay. But in what capacity do you hope to serve this country? Through your party. I thought you were going on to football. I'll come to that. I, I, I think, I will, that's, that's, I that's think you've, had, you've for had enough for, for the politics. That's not why we're here. No, no, no. I mean, that's that's remember, we're here. we, we spent 30 minutes. Because tomorrow is World Engineering this. Day. And I, I final want, one. Final one, I promise of you. Of course, I didn't want to disrespect you or no, your viewers. No, I, I agree with you. And I think it's I a good point. But and, and, let's not lose the and, focus and we, of why we're here. We kept every promise to this, including you know this. So, so. but final question on this. What's your relationship with the man you've worked for once, he's currently the president and Nado. I've always had a good relationship with him. Um, he's been like a senior brother to me for many years. I still see him um, since he's been president. I went to him personally to go and congratulate him at home. I've visited him a number of occasions. Even and this year, he, you know, I mean, he calls once in a while. He does? Oh, yes. yes I yes. don't believe I mean, it. You don't? <laughs> Because I, 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 mean, I, mean, I lived I through him. the time that you were going no. through the challenges. I don't think that was said about you, that you were conspiring against him. You wanted Agenda 2020. Well, well, I, I think we all know, you know, I don't want to get into that. Sometimes I don't want to dignify these things because yeah. everybody knows what I've done for this party and where my But you don't think is. you have to address it because, you see... Well, the right time will come for yes. us to address but it. But that's what I'm saying. I'm but, surprised. I'm but, surprised that he calls you. But, but I call him too. I go to him. I, oh, you do so do? Yes, 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 yes. You're so pals. Yes. I mean, there's... He, we so why do you think there's public image that the, the two of you are on terrible terms? No, 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 no. If I want to see the president, I call him sometimes at night, and I'll drive to him. And then uh, we'll have a little chat, you know. Um, we, we've been friends for many years. We were friends yeah. before politics, mind you. When my office at Constru Council was at Adabraka 54 Jones Nelson Road, and he was off uh, Kujo, Kujo Thompson Road. Mm. And so that was in the 80s. And uh, don't forget, he was this... Um, president of the Greater Accra Bar during the difficult times of the Martyrs Day celebrations mm. when, when the lawyers wanted to remember the death of my father and his colleagues. The cadres would be mobilized and beat them up. And he's too tall. And that's how we became very close. Mm. We've, we've been close ever since. And of course, in politics, things can happen. Things, And you have to be realistic. Have you I, forgiven, I said, though? I've, I've never had a heart of bitterness. Never. It's never been In spite of me. all that you believe, because I've heard you complain never. in the past. Never. In spite of all that you believe you went through. Never. I mean, those who did what they did, <laughs> some of them still see me and they realize that mm. it, it was all a farce. It's completely unnecessary. You're not bitter at all? Not at all. Because a lot of allegations. I've, ne I've never true. been bitter. I don't, you don't have time to be bitter. You know, life is too short to be happy. Look, I love football. I love golf. I like F1. So my week is full. I'm always happy. I'm watching soccer. I'm doing... Engineering doesn't even give me time to do anything. I'm so mm. busy in a day doing things. We are preparing for an annual general conference, which will happen at the end of March. And in fact, I didn't expect the job to be so hectic. I was telling some of my past presidents who pushed me into this, I said, look, I didn't bargain for it's this. It's consumed you. <laughs> it's, I've been to your office yeah, a few times, so yeah, I know what I'm talking yeah, it's, about. It's, 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 it's a lot of work. It's a good my. distraction for you, actually. Well, it's good. It's good. Um, it's a good therapy. Takes yeah. your mind off the difficult last few years. But but again, I'm I'm naturally a very tough character. So uh, if I say I'm looking forward to seeing you on the campaign trail, would I be too ambitious? Contributing in some form. I'd rather you don't make that comment. I'm saying too optimistic. I'd rather it comes to you as a surprise. Okay, that means that we might see you on the campaign trail. I take that. Is that fair? <laughs> you still want to. Drag I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I mean, I mean, because you are an orator. I mentioned that you're probably one of those who inspired me to take my job seriously because you, you have, have, interviewee. Goodness me, you you, you just will expose an ill-prepared journalist. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Just no, a few, no, no. Just a few times. I'll tell just that story times. later. When you're writing your book, <laughs> let me contribute that page to it. Okay. Um, and okay. so you, you, wouldn't, you, you wouldn't mind at all what I'm doing to you right now. You've done no, it to a no, million no, no, people no. I before. That, I, people all, forget you used to be a journalist all, yourself. It's all part of the job. It's all part of the job. So are you back on the campaign trail? Would I see you? I think I've given that answer. <laughs> Football, though. Yeah. Um, a lot has happened. Bring back the love um, that has been... Champion. We, a lot has happened since we last spoke about football. So yes. we have a new coach, 
We have a new administration. What's your take on where football is today, Ghana football? I think my views remain the same. I think we've got it wrong. Oh, goodness. Yeah. We've got it wrong. We don't change this? We've got it wrong. You know, football is a community-based game. Okay? Yeah. And the attempt to isolate governments from football administration in this country is something that I've never supported. Yeah. Because we cannot create an island out of football and say those who run football don't re report to anybody. Football is no more important than the military or the Bank of Ghana or, or the Electoral Commission. Or I, I quite don't understand how it happened and how they've allowed it to remain to today. And I thought that when the normalization committee came in, they, they could have used that period to have a, a sit down with the, the major stakeholders, the, the, the former uh, ministers and all the people who have played a role over the last 20, 30 years mm. in our football. Because we used to have a system. And I said this, and I'll repeat it. A system where government and the football fraternity worked hand in hand. You understand? And that system somehow was destroyed in 2006. When some people took a trip to Zurich and said FIFA says nobody should touch her. FIFA is a federation of international football associations. It's not God. It cannot run the rule over a sovereign country. They can't tell us how we want to run our things. The way we are, the government provides all the facilities, looks after the national teams and all that. You can't keep a government away. Mm. I think it is wrong. And we had a system that used to work during the PNDC time, NDC time, through MPP1. And the big, you know, mm. it worked. After all, when we took over from the NDC in 2000, we appointed President Kofi, appointed Ben Kofi. FIFA mm. didn't say anything. Mm. After his four years, and he said he was a bit tired, President appointed uh, uh, Nyaho Tama. And you broke our World Cup jinx. You finally took a step. That's, That's right. right. And, you know, I think we've lost it. A, a group of people took over football, and individual interests held sway. So now if you look at the league, you can't even identify the, the teams. I mean, I could rattle whole sunset, whole mighty eagles, Abu Akosu Subribi, Upper West Heroes, Savannah Stars, Bewa Stars, mm -hmm. uh, Swedro Fankoba, Swedro All Blacks, Eleven Wise, Hazakes, Olympics, Santi Kotoko, Cornerstones, Kufrudia Rovers. You know, these are community teams, so they had support. Mm -hmm. But the FA is back in charge now. They have a new FA. No, no. Well, all I'm trying to say, the teams that are playing now, these are personal teams. People who set up a team, who, who is supporting those teams? Mm -hmm. So they can't fill the stadium. It's only the traditional clubs, Kotokan has that, a semblance of that. And we are having challenges because now with the explosion of television and the the Premier League. How can the current administration change this? Well, the current GFA administration. What can they do to change it briefly? Because we, you know, well, they have to still go back to government and have a chat. I think that government has to deliberately drive a policy of encouraging people to support football teams. If football teams don't have a support base, even companies would not sponsor you. The government must get involved. It, it is important. Okay. It is important because the state, fortunately. Uh, we have now better stadia because of two, two, 2008, mm -hmm. and now the stadia is always empty. Where you should know? we be tomorrow, though, on the back to engineering panel before end? What, what's, where's the event? The auditorium of the Accra Technical University, 9 o'clock is the time. We, we are encouraging all who are interested in the sustainable development goals. And there's also going to be an exhibition of tools, hand tools for the students as well of the technical university and uh, it will be a fantastic fashion we are uh, mm. expecting the the ministry which is responsible for tvet that technical to down, yeah. education to join us and okay. also uh, represent uh, i think the deputy minister of uh, mm. um, water and sanitation we'll be there. has uh, okay. indicated he will be there so um, the unesco would come and deliver a statement and uh, of course uh, the vice chancellor of Accra uh, technical university uh, would would be there to host all of us, okay. and we want a lot of the young kids, you know, especially the thinking. girls, to aspire to become professional yeah. engineers. There are many different branches: yeah. process engineering, electronic. You know where you have to be tomorrow. I'm grateful that you joined me. It's been a very good conversation. Although I did to you what you've done to many in the past. That's a couple of Japan. I will come back here when he's ready to have a full political conversation. But I got as much as I can from him. Enjoy the rest of the evening.